The auxiliary buses on the HVS 490 are able to cut or dissolve or wipe from source to source. So now you have an auxiliary bus that you can actually use in live production for onset monitors or for projection. We take this one step further in the 490 by implementing our ME light technology so that you have a preview of the next transition on the auxiliary bus. So all 12 of our auxiliary buses are able to cut, mix, and wipe. In addition, the auxiliary buses can be assigned as ME lights. So I assign an ME light to an auxiliary bus and then on the control stripe I choose ME light. So now ME light is my ME. ME lights have up to four keyers assigned to them. So I have a ME light control with background transition and keyers. So on screen now I see a complete preview and program using ME light that is exactly as you would see it using ME1 or ME2. The HBS 490 adds a new chroma key feature. There are four chroma keys available that can be assigned to any keyer on the switcher. This is a particularly useful feature when you are assigning the chroma key to an ME light or to an AUX bus. We double click the keyer to get to the key menu. In the key menu, we set up the key type as a bus and the insert signal to be the chroma key fill. Key source being also coming from the chroma key. Then in the chroma keyer menu, we have a choice of sampling up to three points on the chroma key. So to access this, we turn our cursor on, and then on our preview monitor, we can see the chroma key camera source, and we can choose where to sample the background. So if I sample there, you see the chroma key background being changed from its color to gray. Sample again. And then maybe I sample out here if I have an uneven background. Okay. When I turn the cursor off, now my chroma key image is loaded. So we turn key 2 to on air and there is my chroma key over background. In addition to the automatic setup, I can page through to the controls to allow me to fine tune the chroma key even more. Our chroma key system gives you control of matte adjust, various filters, and also shrinking of the key. The image that you see here, if I shrink the top, I eliminate the black line from the top of that chroma key. I can shrink top, bottom, left, and right sides. The left and right I can shrink up to two pixels. To do a alpha key or a lower third key, we set up another keyer with a key type of bus, an insert signal coming from our still three in this case, and the key source signal coming from the alpha channel. Only thing needed to do with this is to simply turn it on. All of the settings are done for you in the keyer. Clip and gain are set by default as linear keys. Of course, if you needed to increase the clip and gain settings, you could do that. Anytime you want to come back to your default settings, it's only necessary to hold down the control to reset to default. A nice feature of the keyers in the Hanabi is that you have transparency control. So rather than having to adjust clip and gain, I have direct control over 
the amount of transparency in my key. So if I'm doing a watermark key, I don't have to pre-create the watermark image. I can do the transparency control in the switcher. And then finally we have the full key. So in the case of a full key, I am creating the alpha channel based on the entire raster. I'm inserting some signal and then when I turn it on I have a full key. In this case my full key is running through a DVE channel. To access that DVE channel key 4 I can use the joystick pop-up and size my full key from default of full down anywhere on screen. Many switcher companies provide this feature, but very few allow you to have perspective, rotation, and tilt on your insert keys or on your picture in picture. So now we have set up with three keyers on air. We have key priority control. So in this case I don't want the picture in picture to be at the front. I want it to be behind the chroma key and I want the chroma key to be behind the text. So there we have a three channel composite on ME1 output of the switcher. The fourth style of key is a CG wipe. So CG wipe, sometimes called alpha wipes. So now that we've set up our CG wipe, we can do a background wipe and as we move the fader on, we see our clip enter the video and progress through and dissolve away to your second video source. That can be done on the fader, it can be done on a auto transition. In the setup for the CG wipe, we can disable the fader so the fader can remain attached to the wipe while the auto transition is the CG wipe.